Welcome back to Trip Talk Tech. Man, I'm excited that you came back for part two of Black Excellence in Technology. The reason we thought this was a cool series to do, we just, again, just want to share some light on uh, positive men and women who have really impacted our communities in a way that we're, never, we're, we're forever grateful. So here we go. Today we're going to show some love to Mr. Lewis Howard Latimer. Mr. Lewis was born in Chelsea, Massachusetts on September the 4th, 1848. Mr. Lewis was the youngest of four children and his mom and dad, Rebecca and George, were only six years out of escape from slavery when they had uh, Lewis. After spending some time in the U.S. Navy during the Civil War, Mr. Lewis went on to work for the Patent Office. During his tenure at the Patent Office, he actually, get this, observed, observed, watching other people, just hanging around on his extra time, watching other people do mechanical drawings. And there he taught himself, taught himself mechanical drawing or how to be a draftsman. Taught itself. No formal education on it. Drafting. Drafting is just a drawing that actually details a schematic or a system view of how something is either built or how does it function. Mr. Lewis was able to teach himself mechanical drawing so well and he stopped playing around with drawings that it was recognized by his employers and they actually promoted him to being a draftsman. Again. He taught himself how to be a draftsman. Mind blowing. Mr. Lewis self-taught draftsman skill would prove to pave the way for many of the inventions that we know today. Did you know that credited inventor Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, was in an all out race with his ops, Elijah Gray, trying to figure out who was going to be the first to bring the telephone patent and get it submitted and accepted. Long story short, Alexander Graham Bell wasn't crazy. He went and got Mr. Lewis Latimer and brought him a part of his team in 1876 to help him to try to be the first one to the door. And with the tireless work of Lewis Latimer, Alexander Graham Bell was able to submit his patent uh, only a few hours before Mr. Gray patent hit the door. And obviously, Alexander Graham Bell patent was accepted and he is the inventor of the telephone as we know it. But again, if it wasn't for Mr. Lewis' tireless work, history as we know it might have been changed. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Lewis. The telephone. Mr. Telephone Man, <laughs> Mr. Lewis, that's you, bro. In 1880, Mr. Lewis was hired by Hiram Maxim, who was actually a competitor to Thomas Edison. He hired him on as a assistant manager and lead draftsman to the U.S. Electric Lighting Company. What Hiram Maxim knew was that Thomas Edison's light bulb was made out of paper filament. The problem with the paper filament was this, it would burn out too fast. So just think paper or bamboo in the middle of your light bulb and somebody lit it. It would stay lit for a while, right? Kind of like incense burning, right? You start burning at the tip and it'll burn until it burn out the same way with the light bulb. Gave you about 14 hours of light. Now, Mr. Lewis didn't invent the light bulb. He just actually made contributions to make the light bulb better. And better from a standpoint, not because it emits more light or whatever, but he actually found a way to make them last longer so they can be more consumable by us customers. And we're able to keep the lights on for a longer period of time than 14 hours. Thanks, Mr. Lewis. So how did he do it? Mr. Lewis developed a way to encase the carbon filament, right? Or the stuff that keeps burning or keep the light going in a cardboard envelope. I mean, what they did with that envelope, it kept the carbon all inside, so it kept the carbon from breaking a little longer than it would in a 14-hour window with the filament being paper and burning out. So what does that really mean? Translation, a longer-lasting light bulb at a cheaper price point, meaning we can buy light bulbs and we can have light bulbs running on our streets, we can have them running in our house, and not have to worry about changing them every day. Once again, thanks, Mr. Lewis. 
Mr. Lewis improved the light bulb. We thank him. But guess what? Thomas Edison wasn't even mad that he improved his invention. What he did do in 1890 was actually post him from Hiram Maxim and had him working for him as a chief draftsman, chief patent expert, and also supervising all of Thomas Edison patents. What does that mean? He trusted him with everything. He was the main patent guy for anything Edison did. That means he was a trustworthy guy. Hard work, but trustworthy. Mr. Lewis would go on to write a book on incandescent lighting that was backed by Thomas Edison, actually even pushed by him. He actually encouraged him to write this book because he just uh, knew his knowledge was vast and he just wanted to share that with the world. Mr. Lewis was also at it as a member of the prestigious Edison Pioneer Group. Now, this group was actually pretty much the industry standard setters for the electronic, the electric industry as we know it today. Mr. Lewis, other inventions include bathrooms that's in the, in the uh, rail cars, evaporative air conditioning that we use today, the system that makes that blow, locking coat rags, safety elevator. Man, this guy, he, he invented a lot and we say thank you. And we say thank you not only for the inventions and we'll get to that, but thank you first for your inspiration. Inspiration, again, six years born removed from slavery. And from that environment, teaching yourself how to be a draftsman, how to take on new things and new challenges and not be afraid. We appreciate that because sometimes we need to know that everything we have is already in us. You proved that to us. So salute to you for that, Mr. Lewis. And second, obviously, you gave us and shown us really the light inside of our houses, inside of, on our streets. And we thank you for that, Mr. Lewis. Hey, I had fun today. I don't know about you. We're coming back with part three to this next time. You got to check us out. Hey, if you like the content today, we ask you to just like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. So when we drop part three, you know it's coming. And on part three, like I said, we're going to tease you a little bit. What we'll say is this. He's the godfather of creamy crack. Y'all looking at me, creamy crack, Keith, really? Now, that's not technical. You're right. But he made a bunch of other technical inventions that we will learn about. But creamy crack, hey, if you didn't grow up in the neighborhoods I grew up, if you, ain't, you, you're not, you ain't got your auntie or a mommy that used to say that, all that is is perm, relaxer, dark and lovely. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. It's Trip Talk Tech, y'all.